Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hi, I'm Kyle Carosa, the Kyle of TV's Kyle. And you're listening to Otaku Generation. And I'm playing with my chicken bear. Book, 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 book. <laughs> Big, big, big well, welcome to Otaku Generation. Generation, next generation radio for otaku. Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. Hello from the past. We're back. We're alive. And the 2018 apocalypse never happened. That's what we would say if this is 2018. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where no crickets can be found here. No, sir. Show number 655, December 27th, 2017. With this week's topic, Nyonko Days. And now, gifts you still have time to get me. Number one, a puppy. Number two, a box of peppermint patties. Number three, a piece of the aggro crag. Number four, a DVD copy of Deep Impact. And number five, everyone's favorite Pokemon, Poliwhirl. And now, someone who refuses to write another opening in 2017, Alan Chase. That's not true, because I think I just wrote the 2018 one. Well, <laughs> you made me a lie, sir. Yeah, that's 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 true. Well, that I'm lying. But anyway, yeah, so uh, no waffle cookies? You don't like waffle cookies? I hate waffle cookies, <laughs> so let me get over this. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Excruciating yes. detail. Yeah, yeah. So, hi, hello, everyone. Uh, I guess this technically will be the last... We will be the last release show of 2017... So welcome. Hi, hello, I'm Alan. Ketchup and Poliwag's are favorite? Or Whirl? Whirl is not my favorite. Oh. I, just, I just picked a really like middle-of-the-road Pokemon, so oh. everyone's favorite. <laughs> and I'm Bryce. Paul and Matt, well, they prioritize family over us. Yeah, for shame. So, so Matt's enjoying, I, I, I'm not, I'm assuming it's nicer weather in Florida. Um, and then Paul realized we were recording kind of off schedule and really early uh, by uh, comparatively to the way we normally do. And he's like, oh, I can't make it. I got family stuff. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I let everyone know a week ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just, um, you know, we just felt it was important for us to get the shows done before 2018 happened because we're all going to be drunk or, uh, you know, doing whatever the hell we want. And podcasting is going to be the lowest of priorities. So, so anyhow, uh, with that said, um, there is a new website. It's been released. It's up. Uh, I will be tweaking some stuff, but I got to a point last night and I was like, hmm, I guess I'm just going to publish this thing and be done with it. And uh, at the very least, during the holidays, you got a, a new site to play with and look at some stuff. And maybe listen to Polymatic. Um, new shows. I don't even know what the schedule is in uh, context. I have a show this of, week. So Bryce, I have to edit it though. I'm sent to you. I'll probably get it tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I'd have to check the timings. I think there might be, should be, probably won't be uh, a Colin Luke coming. But anyhow, assume new shows are coming. Go check the website. It will tell you what new shows are available. So flash games on the site because you said like stuff to play with so just what came to mind is some like nice to talk a generation flash games are you gonna build some and like who uses <laughs> who uses flash in in this decade that's the point is homestar runner still updating hmm? when i think of flash my favorite is usually homestar runners my the best use of flash animation but i don't I, mean, I don't know if they're still doing their thing. Um, yeah, I... Uh, I've done I, some updates I, on their YouTube yeah. channel, actually. Oh, yeah, they have a YouTube That's weird, yeah. You could pause them now. That was one thing about Homestar Runners. You couldn't pause the cartoons because they were Flash. Right, yeah, so yeah. That's kind of the one thing a lot of people had, like, getting over that hurdle. Well, you <laughs> um, you had gotten DVDs as a gift yeah, at yeah, some yeah, point. Yeah. So, you know, you had the pause ability before they, oh, sure, they yeah. showed up on YouTube. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Homestar Runner is definitely uh, a thing of its time, but a lot of a lot of the masters of cartoons and stuff still refer to it. And this was a web cartoon. This was not like on TV. Uh, Strong Bad emails, right? We used to love that They're inside the club. So I watched them recently. They still hold up. I watched that busted out those DVDs. Yeah. I had to show my girlfriend. She had no idea what Homestar Runner was because she's like five years younger than me. So yeah, I was like, hey, check these out. And she thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She liked the Japanese cartoon one. That's the one that got me. Um, ben and Stinko Man. Yeah, yeah, that was Strong one of the, like, what would I one be of the as first. A Japanese cartoon. Well, or, or Trogdor, right? Well, or, that, was, that was the first one I saw when I came to the club. 
Oh, you were showing them. That was the first time oh, I saw. Gotcha. It. I was like, well, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was, you know, I was showing lots of uh, lots of those things during the club time. That's a thing that only like thirty people know about in the world, and uh, the rest of you don't really care. So anyhow, you know, hello everyone. Hi, how's it going? Um, so Christmas happened for you guys. It has not happened for us yet, but I'm sure it was all jolly and fun. We all got coal. We need that yes. bumper though, sir. What's freesh? What's bang? What's squeak with the OG crew? <laughs> I always like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so James sent us cookies. So that's that's new. Uh, yeah. He sent us a lot of cookies. So we got to make sure we don't eat them all up, and that uh, you know Paul and Matt get some as well. We don't want to go too far into the cookies now because your next opener references the cookies. <laughs> so it's going to be weird if we don't yeah, that's eat true. cookies on that show. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. What did I do? I finished the website. I think that's about the extent, given the, the cycle of time. I didn't really spend any time watching anything. Um, and we are sort of in this, you know, uh, Christmas, December time void where things don't come back until, like, January or March. So... Uh, I've not caught up with anything worth talking about right now. How about gaming? Um, gaming, I've not done a thing. I've really yeah. just have been focused on actually spending little slivers of free time on working on a little problem here and there for the website. Um, you know, so even though I took like two months to do that, I was really just working on, a, you know, a, maybe at best a few hours every every week. So when you put that together, I, I basically cobbled together the site in about 20 hours or so. So, I mean, you know, with that, um, I was just sort of, I built something and go, no, nah, I don't like how that was implemented. There's got to be a better way. And then I would spend those, you know, hour or two kind of tweaking it. And um, yeah, so that's it. I didn't, I really kind of skipped a lot of watching any real TV. I let YouTube run in the background and, and you know, way I go. So uh, the most exciting thing is the thing I did last week, which was I want to saw a movie. But that that's about the extent of it. So both us, what about you? Anything uh, worth talking about? Well, number of anime are coming to an end for the fall 2017 season. Mm. So one of the shows I saw the last episode of was Inyashiki Shaki. What's that one? Um, the last hero one, the one about the old guy and the teenager who get turned into robots after they get run over by the UFO. Huh. I think I missed the previews for fall, actually. I'm not sure I'm not, <laughs> it's not ringing a bell, but uh, I'll look it up. It doesn't even ring a bell with me and I was present. So, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. The likelihood I'm actually paying attention to what we're kind of absorbing doesn't mean much. Um, so, how is it? So, the last episode, they pretty much check off guns. The um, What's going to happen, like, halfway through. Like, I'm not going to directly say to spoil, quote, unquote. I mean, if you're watching it and you hit the halfway point or so... There's broadcast on TV about an event that's going to happen, so it's pretty obvious how things are going to turn out like most unfortunately like it's unfortunate that the obvious predictions turned out to be how they wrapped it up it was kind of a most lazy sort of like we couldn't really figure out a way to deal with the scenario so we just went with the most obvious sort of way that we could force an ending but that being said like I was kind of slightly hoping that maybe it would be a red herring or maybe there would do some sort of dark twist on how the thing turned out but Again, if I say what the thing is, um, it has the ending, now pretty much spoiling the ending. Mm. And it wasn't a bad show, as I said. The ending is kind of disappointing, but I like that the villain isn't kind of dry as far as him being like, ooh, I'm evil, I'm going to go and kill everyone because now I'm a robot, Terminator guy. But... Still, he doesn't progress as much as the person I was, I was hoping. So, it's still something that I don't regret watching it. And seeing that was only 11 episodes long, it was okay. And so, also, a couple weeks ago, we mentioned that Recovery of an MMO Junkie ended on episode 10. And that there was some sort of, like, 11th episode OVA will be released with the Japanese manga. So, at the time... We weren't really thinking that was, or at least Paul and me, since we were both watching it and talking about it, didn't think that episode 11 would be released, but Crunchyroll actually did release episode hmm. 11. But episode 11 is, it doesn't really add much to the end story. It's actually two half-length episodes. But still, if you like that show, there's actually 11th episode hmm. up. Hmm. And also, Kino's Journey, or the remake of... Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
one, the last couple episodes actually just reshowed episodes I remember from the original series. Like, it's been a long time since I've seen the original series, but at least two of the episodes, what the themes were, were things I clearly remember from the original. And two, the very last episode, Kino faces his harshest enemy of all, Sheep! I mean, like, quite literally, that's, like, the whole episode's <laughs> about him, like, trying to deal with these, like, an evil, huge flock of sheep. Oh, <laughs> So that kind of speaks a little bit of it. It wasn't a bad series. Again, I don't regret watching it. But um, uh, what's your opinion of it compared to the original? Uh, again, it's been a long time since I've seen the original. Actually, with their gift certificate, I actually already used it. And I was oh, originally okay. going to get a few like more recent movies. But instead, mm. I got, or I might as well just even say now, I got Kinos, the original Kinos, because it's oh, been such okay. a long time. So I thought I'd rewatch it. Guy. Cowboy Bebop because even though I've seen Cowboy Bebop I don't actually have a good copy of it I just oh, have really? me recording it from when it was on Adult Swim so I thought Guy, yeah, it would be good to actually have a proper copy of Cowboy Bebop and sure. with subtitles yeah but I think it had a pretty good dub it Cowboy did Bebop. that was like one of the exceptions mm-hmm. at the time certainly of like that dub's not that dub's not bad yeah <laughs> for sure yeah I know you um, you definitely were was it Phil Bloom who was the the guy was uh, who did the voice Phil Bloom Steve Bloom I believe Steve Bloom. was he Spike? I think he was. Yeah, 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 yeah. But... yeah I know you had a, um, you know, you had a high opinion of the guy because he did Spike. And you know he's doing good as well. Yeah. <laughs> and also Speed Racer. But this one's purely dubbed. It's not got yeah, Japanese yeah. Right. Uh, language, but still it's all of Speed Racer. That was actually the least expensive of it. You know, it was like 52 <laughs> episodes of. What was that, like a couple bucks? It was $10. Oh, so okay. Like, That's surprising. Or like 11 something like that. But I mean, it was like less than 15 over 10 for all speed racer hmm. so um and after i'd use all three of those things i had spent still like a dollar because it went over but so for 50 dollars you can get elf cowboy bebop kino's the original kino and speed racer all right or at least for this time being because i'm not sure how long these sales will like these last sales yeah yeah do, like, yeah but that's stuff. the other that's the some advantage of you getting the early sort of gift certificate like from whenever i literally buy it because then you can still live in the window of the sales for you know yeah. the holidays so. for also this is right stuff we're talking about yeah. so for people this name like product placement even though we get <coughs> absolutely nothing back from them <laughs> right. Or, um, I mean, Crunchyroll, I guess you can buy stuff from now, right? Or they Usually really... it's merchandise, not right. necessarily DVDs and mm-hmm. Blu-rays. Um, I asked for a couple of Blu-ray sets also <coughs> from Amazon from Christmas. I don't know if I'm going to get them or not. But yeah. I wanted, like, a copy of Haruhi, um, the Tenchi OVA. There was a box set for that. I was like, yeah, after watching the Mahoji special, I was like, I want Tenchi on Blu-ray. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, have it. there's definitely box like, sets. the movie collection they also had a pretty good one of the three movies. There's there's definitely box sets that I would like, but it, for anyone who's, like, gifting in the price point of, like, $20, box sets cost more than that. Yeah, it depends and, on, the, on the on the show. Right. Like, it can be very uh, okay. fluctuating, especially on Amazon. I'm sure right, right stuff can also be cheaper. I'm sure if you wanted to buy Speed Racer all 52 episodes, then okay. That 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 does qualify, but uh, you know, great stuff though has like the real goods. Um, so you know, you look for a box set, even if it's just two seasons, it could it could be forty bucks yeah, very easily. Right. Which isn't yeah. like go back in the day when you had to pay like twenty dollars at least for one DVD. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, I um, with three episodes on. Yeah, it. exactly. <laughs> I bought because I wanted to make my first music video. I, I bought a uh, great digital Target. I bought it dubbed and subbed, and I still paid somewhere over a hundred bucks for that. Um, What'd you get? Uh, Great digital Target. It's an old anime. It's oh, set in the post-apocalyptic. Right. Yeah. right. Oh, so really back. Yeah. So I mean, that's a back in the day price. Uh, it's also a manga. You might want to check out the manga. Oh, yeah, you, I think you would I like the manga. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, the irony is, so that was my first Otakon, 1997. Okay, so I'm walking around, and I'd seen this anime, and, and I bought. Um, I think at that Otakon, I think I bought those tapes, right? Because I intended to make a music video out of it. And I was like, oh. And then I saw this guy walking around impressively looking like Gray from Digital Target. And that guy became my friend way outside of Otakon where we form Red Apple Productions. Oh, I have heard of this. I, It's funny. I just actually bought the first volume of it, the manga, I forgot, because it was like a used bookshop. It had like yeah. a million books. And I found like this, what is this gray? And this cool guy with a cap yeah. on. And, and, and all the stickers. On his, like, one of the lips. I guess his name yeah. was his girlfriend, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't read it. Okay, now. So, yeah. so I didn't know that was the same thing, gray, because I guess it's, 
I know that was Gray Digital Target. It's just called Gray. On, yeah, yeah. On that particular manga, so. Uh, but you know, Rob had he 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 got the right helmet, uh, the right stickers. He did all this everything. He like he worked that thing out. It was perfect. But the irony is, I remember some guys like, hey, that guy's doing really. That's a really rememberable cosplay. Like, well, and it turns out we're friends. So um, it's just the irony of of a small world. Of back then but anyhow so um i made a really bad music video to it mm -hmm. yeah 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 um uh, one that probably no one was that well, very few people have seen i don't even know if i have the tape for it to be honest All right. so yeah, anyhow there. um okay so anything else okay so also actually this is really really horrific but what is the website address for because I was going to see if I could like look up because I thought we did oh, gray, so um, I was going to so see if I could do an episode probably search. not, but it's ognetworks.tv. Or if you go to any of the standard like fanboy forecast, uh, you know, WWF fanboy forecast or uh, attack generation.org.com.net, uh, this is Doctor Life, uh, Polymatic goes somewhere else because that's John's domain in his site. Um, but there is a Polymatic stub in, in our website, and what else? There is, um, I, oh, Colin Luke, duh. So if you go to ColinLuke.com, it all, all points back to the same website. And then if you can figure out any of the other projects that we have never lit up but it intended to start something, those DNSs go there too. Or OGNetworks.tv. Okay, see, so yeah, I was trying to type out Otaku Generations. You could still my, do that, yeah. yeah. If we'd done Grey's Atomic, I wasn't on the show at that point. Or I was taking a break. So, so. there is a, a search option on that website from any point, and then there's also a search page. No, it's not actually this that surprises me because I thought I pitched that at some point, but I guess we didn't actually do it as a topic. I do. It looks cool. I have the VHS tapes. That's about the extent of it. I'm, yeah. I might have the DVD. I don't, I don't even know. And to bring up something that I haven't brought up in a long time because it pissed Alan off because I guess apparently I was Ashton's? talking a bit. Yeah, so <laughs> at the end of the year, he does the Advent count on Durs, and right now he's mm -hmm. doing the, and so quite literally, like 24 days, it's updated daily, even though like, they filmed it all on the same day. <laughs> but so he's doing a collaboration with another British um, YouTuber called NerdCube. I don't really personally care for NerdCube. He does a lot of like toy review stuff. That's not why I don't care for him. I just don't care for his attitude about some of the stuff but that being said who's the other guy sorry I missed that uh, Nerd Cubed no I mean before him who's working oh Ashens uh, Ashens okay yeah so they're doing the staff encounter thing and they've been doing it for a couple of years and this time they were reviewing three advent calendars one is and it's actually a proper Disney licensed um, frozen advent calendar the other one is Cars and then there's Paw Patrol, which is some sort of like children's like 3D CG. Is it Cars, the franchise, movie franchise? Or just yeah, like yeah. Cars in general. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's okay. the actual um, gotcha. also Pixar Disney gotcha. properly licensed. And then there's also a tool set, which is like some sort of, I guess, European or British or maybe it's international. I just don't know various tool manufacturers that well where – it's like a small ratchet set where, like, each day you get a different, like, <laughs> screwdriver or ratchet How stuff. How useful. <laughs> Actually, that's the one that they're liking the most. Well, maybe like, <laughs> it's getting them dolled out in such a slow pace. Like, what if I need that ratchet? <laughs> I'm not going to get for another two weeks. <laughs> but, yeah, interesting. So what's, so they, they review these? Yeah, like, each day they, like, open up a different one, and then they sort of give their review of the four different advent calendars. I think they've been very cruel to – or overly harsh, I should say, to Paw Patrol because it's mostly been, like – simple like sort of children's art implements like markers but it'll be like one day they get two markers or two crayons or mm -hmm. a stencil or whatnot like it's not a thing particularly great but compared to okay again this is like an officially licensed from disney frozen calendar most of the days except for like five days are cardboard they're like cardboard cutouts mm -hmm. of characters yeah it's just insanely bad like they're opening it up it's not even necessarily cardboard cutouts of characters it'll be like a sled in cardboard oh, or it's really bad <laughs> steps or even worse just like these little i think they're like cakes or candles or something in cardboard oh, i mean great. it's insanely crappy and then the cars one is slightly better but again like only five of the days have actually been like actual plastic toy cars right. the rest have been little plastic flags and then a couple of them have been little plastic rectangular prisms that are meant to look like the um, license plates. Oh, hmm. So, like, most of them have been crap. Oh, and there have been six little orange cones that have Great. been distributed 
across six the, days, man. Yeah. I was picking all of them on one day. That's it drove me off. <laughs> yeah, so these are like for officially licensed advent calendars are just disturbingly crap. <laughs> like so the best one actually has been the tool set. Yeah. But that being said, besides just the Ashen's calendar thing with the advent calendar stuff, because it's kind of interesting when you go to like other YouTube sites and they do like the Lego advent calendars and they have mm-hmm. like the various like each day will be like a tiny micro um, set or mm-hmm. sometimes there'll be a minifig or whatnot. So there's some interesting stuff there. And the other thing is um, Nostalgia Correct has been doing, because it's December, he's doing this Disney Ember and stuff like December Disney Plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. where he's been doing various um, Disney Channel TV movie stuff. Oh, Disney mm-hmm. movie's a good choice. Yeah. I was saying, is it the classic movies or is it like the made for TV? Okay. Yeah, that's so. better. <laughs> that's more interesting, probably. So, but that he's also been doing daily. Um, Again, this is for um, Nostalgia Craig, not for Ashens. Ashens. Yeah. yeah. So, just bringing up some YouTube channels that because it's December, they have tons of content. So, right, it's yeah. really bored and dealing with. Yeah, I guess that's enough. Okay. Um, so, Bryce. Wait, I gotta find my. Oh, here it is. My list of things I want to talk about for this show. Um, not a lot really new or anything. I mean, I'm. I was trying to beat Near Automata before I came here today. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just. I think I'm in like one of the final sequences, but I got like a few like battles into it and I lost because I got sloppy. Into, mm-hmm. it, was, it was like alternating between like a combat and like a, the sh- uh, shmup style. Yeah. And I got I got sloppy during the shmup style and got killed and it put me back to the beginning of it. I'm like, I don't have time to beat this. Um, so, but it's going crazy places that I like. Um, I'll probably finish it up next week for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I was oh, also I'm, trying to do all those sort of alphabetical endings. Like no, I haven't gone through ones. a ton of those yet. I probably will check them out as far as, like, maybe watch a YouTube montage of the, like, silly endings and see yeah. what those are like. Because I know there's things you can do where, like, you can, you know, ignore a distressed call and just go somewhere <laughs> else, and then that changes the ending. Like, that's an ending. So I've got a couple. Like, I ate the mackerel, which is, like, eat this mackerel you catch or something. Yeah. And it, it's... I guess poisonous to androids. I don't know. <laughs> Things just go real bad. <laughs> um, I you can also like take out the OS chip from like your upgrade stack and then you'll die. <laughs> but I haven't tried that one yet. Um, but yeah, it's cool. It's a cool game though. I don't have too much more to say about it. I'm interested once I'm done with them. I'm definitely gonna check out Nier that you gave me because I yeah. want to see like I'm more. I'm just really curious more than the story. I'm more curious about like some of the, the mechanics of the games and how close they are and where ideas from one came to the other. But I'm also just in the story to see where it goes because um, I really have only seen gameplay of it. I really don't know much about the original Nier at all. But um, it's the same guy, right? It has to be because that creepy mask he wears, yeah. like in the cover of Near. I think I see in the corner. So yeah, he the same guy. Okay, cool. Um, music's really great in Near Automata, uh, for sure. It's very um, has like a lot of like I don't know what the word is like kind of like a choir in a lot of sections where they're sort of singing, but it doesn't like overpower the scene. It's just you notice it as you're like walking around town and stuff like that. Um, very relaxing, and then also like, it can really change up uh, really nicely to like action sequences and stuff like that. Yeah, I've listened to the. Uh, soundtrack to both mm-hmm. and there's a lot of like allusions to the original soundtrack okay, yeah. and gotcha. they're all my that's cool yeah uh, i'll have to check it out um i haven't had a chance because my girlfriend has the ps3 my ps3 so i can't <laughs> play it um until i go over to her place which i will be on tuesday so i'll play it then hmm. um yeah i wish they would <laughs> i wish there was a way to play more ps3 games on the ps4 i think that's something they should probably maybe do i don't know but they have like this playstation now service where like it's kind of like you can stream games to your console but it costs like a subscription fee <laughs> yeah. I, I just don't think there's enough games that i would want to play necessarily again um to pay for that but i just wish there's a way to like i understand like it's different technology so you can't just say make all ps3 games work on the ps4 it's e- that easy <laughs> but um Anyway, this is a long rant, but um, there's a lot of cool PS3 games I think I uh, would like to see sort of brought over. I mean, Catherine just got announced for like a re-release, which, oh, yeah. is, which is crazy. I didn't or is think... it a re-release or is it an actual sequel? Um, it's not a sequel. It's a re-release. Um, the big thing, of they're adding a third Catherine. Yeah. I think called Rin. <laughs> so that's what I thought was going to be a new no, one. No, it's because... not a full-on. Um, what's crazy to me, though, is the community that's gotten really excited about this is the competitive Catherine playing community, which I had forgotten they had a multiplayer mode, mm. and it's going to have online multiplayer this time as well. So it's like... People are really jazzed for that, so I think it's really cool that they're bringing that out, especially for like such a small crew. Um, you know, I have my issues with Catherine, uh, but I think it's still worth playing in the end. Um, That's a story I found it interesting, but the puzzles I just had hell of a time. With. Yeah, I got I get I got good at it, but at one point I had to I was like I think I went down easy at one point just to like because I wanted to see what was going to happen. I was tired of failing at the puzzles. Um, it's a, it's a it's a cool game. I guess it's cool. It was like I guess the Persona team taking their first like high definition game 
I believe they're the ones that made it. Or yeah, the first... Uh, Catherine, yeah. Or, I mean, the first PS3 game. Right, about. yeah, and I guess, ironically, PS4 ended up coming... I mean, P- Persona 5 ended up coming out on PS4, PS3 as well, but, like, it took them so long to get from that to Persona 5. It's kind of crazy. Or Persona 5, I think, was still designed for the PS3, and then they essentially just... Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the art style in Persona 5 works, I think. Like, you can that scales yeah. up and down well. Like, it's very, like, you know, cell shaded and, like, cartoony. It's, it works well. Um, that game gets by on its style more than its graphical prowess, <laughs> I would say. Um, but, yeah, so Nier Automata. I th- maybe, though, it's funny because, like, a, when Nier Automata came out uh, around when Zelda and uh, another big game, Horizon Zero Dawn, came out. So I found, like, a lot of people were – it got overlooked a bit at the time. And then now everyone's sort of like, all, like a lot of game reviewers are now trying to like wrap up their game of the year, like their backlog. And a lot of people are talking about Nier Automata because no one got around to it the first time. And it's kind of crazy seeing all that. And I'm wondering if that's going to like rejuvenate. Maybe they would actually do a Nier uh, re-release for the PS4 for a new group of people who now appreciate Nier in a different way <laughs> than maybe they did before. Um, I thought that's all speculation. I don't know. Um, as far as games, uh, I played... <laughs> I had a coworker over, and he wanted to play some Smash Brothers. So we played some Smash Brothers on Wii U. I busted my Wii U for the first time in months. Um... I guess it's great. Is there uh, Smash Brothers for the uh, Switch yet? Or not, not yet, no. Oh. Um, I'm on the, at first, I was like, ah, do I really need our Smash Brothers? But now I'm kind of, after playing this again, like, yeah, that'd be cool. Put more characters in there. <laughs> like, I'd be cool. The, what they did with Mario Kart, they kind of, like, just made Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and, like, put it on the Switch with, like, all the DLC included and, like, yeah. a few new characters. So I thought this wouldn't be a bad... I wouldn't be okay. I would pay for another copy of Smash Brothers for the Wii U on the Switch. Both have it on the portable, and also they added like four or five new characters and some new stages. I'd be, I'd be up for that. It also makes so much sense with the Switch because yeah. of the whole surf sort of like co-op, like two people. They're like right, real yeah, controllers. Because those um the the moves aren't very complicated in Smash Bros. It's basically two buttons, a jump button, and then the directions. That's how you do special moves. So it's it would work well for that. I know, like some people were like saying, you could play Street Fighter that way, and I'm like, I don't play Street Fighter. This tiny little damn thing and try to do core <laughs> circles and punches. Uh, but hey, they're they're making they're putting that out soon too. The yeah. Street Fighter like anniversary collection. The Switch. Uh, but yeah, Smash Bros. is still cool. Uh, and then I read a comic a while ago. I never talked about it. Um, but it was decent. I read it. Uh, it's called Shudder. It's an image published uh, game or game comic. Um, it's about this girl whose father, like, it's very fantastical. Like, a lot, like it's kind of like the rules of this world, like, anything can fucking happen. It's, in a lot of ways, actually, it's kind <laughs> of like um, Blood Blockade Battlefront, where, like, there's these gangs of lions that are, like, roaming the city, and then there's, like, this guy's a sorcerer or <laughs> stuff like that. A lot of weird things all melting into this, like, city. And she's like kind of a, she used to be like a big adventurer, and then she became a photographer. And I, I for, they haven't fully gone to like what happened to her father, but either way, her siblings that she never knew about are coming to get her, <laughs> and she's just um, she's not liking it because uh, she kind of wanted to have like a more normal life, um, get away from the adventuring stuff, but now she's in it again. Um, it's cool. I, I'm not sure I'm gonna watch a ton more, a reach a ton more of it. Um, I read the first volume. It's on Comicsology. That's sort of that service I talked about a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week. Um, but it's interesting. It's very, um, very fantastical. So I like it for that. And it's fun. I don't the know. fox with the katana. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like it's a lot of weird stuff. And you kind of have to accept everything. Like her family butler is this like old man who got cursed by her ancestor to become their butler forever. He's now a skeleton guy. <laughs> like, it, but he's also very nice. He's like come to accept this. And it's just, it's a weird, it's a weird comic. But uh, it's cool. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, like I said, it didn't like wow me that I need to go and buy more of it per se. But I don't know if you can check it out for free on, or not for free. Like a, you know through a subscription <laughs> service might be up your alley no lack of creativity that's for sure um i guess that's it really for me um like i said this week was kind of busy was getting ready for the holidays mm, and stuff yeah no anime uh well I, I we never talked about this a couple weeks ago i watched the black blood blockade battlefront and beyond i guess yeah. what they call that second yeah. season it's all right i watched the first two episodes um the one where he like wants to play his video game but he can't because he gets wrapped up in a whole big case of supernatural, and then the one where the hospital, like the, the Phantom Ward, yeah, and they fight the. I kind of like the second episode more, just because I like the action. I thought it was pretty good. Um, them trying to sort of fight off this this vampire is clearly stronger than the two of them, like the two older guys of the group. Uh, I forget their names. Claws but, and um, the Ice Guy. Oh yeah, and, I can't remember the names anymore. Yeah. But also, I think that episode works a little bit better because it's less Leo centric like yeah, Leo yeah. I think so he does a... he does kind of like help him out again because he can, he can read the name he can use his eyes to see the name of the vampires and that allows Claus to seal them up yeah but it's just playing support in that episode yeah, yeah. where instead of focusing on him yeah. like it is with the one before that mm-hmm. because I really think that they gimped Leo's character in the second season yeah yeah I, yeah you're right I think he was more interesting I think maybe it was that like Non manga like common thread they put up there. Yeah. I remember one of my favorite scenes is when he like was leaving. Um, the girl black or white? What was her name? Um, 
white. White, I guess I just say white. <laughs> and um, so he like walking away through a couple scenes, and he's like, ah, oh, and he like walks right back, like grabs her, busts her out of the house, and then, like walks her back up for a date. Like I thought it was very cool of Leo to do that because yeah. and the way he presented it was really good. But the whole thing was like the anime original that a lot of people were like, oh, this isn't like the comic, yeah. and they got. But I thought that was actually what made it work. And it didn't really dominate the like. There was plenty of stuff that wasn't that in all yeah. the episodes. So I don't know if you were like, it's oh, there's too much focus on this white and black character. I'm like, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's good stuff. Um, I, mean, it's, I guess because like the show's so very, I guess like episodic or serial. I guess what I mean is that like the seems like the plots kind of self-contained in a lot of the episodes. So I don't really feel like episodic. Then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, I feel like it's one of those things where it wasn't like taking away from this grander story that was much better. It was a sort of Bang not, a little bit too. Yeah, right? a little bit. And in a good way. Like I Little Witch Academia I kinda had that opposite problem yeah. with it was sort of like the kind of taken away from it. But it, it was a way to explore Leo's character instead of just battles, because he's not really that effective in a battle. <laughs> um but yeah. I'll probably watch some more of it. Um I'd like that first season a lot, so I have actually continued to watch mm-hmm. Blood Black Hey Battlefront Beyond, even though it's not as good as the first season. I feel it's still enjoyable. Yeah. I mean it looks good, it's got good style, mm-hmm. and the characters are fun, so yeah. As we record this, this, to my knowledge, is the last episode for mm-hmm. it. Yeah. But um, how about the opening and ending songs? Um, and just the music in general, because that was a big good. part. It's like, good. I really like that Bump of Chicken opening from the first <laughs> season. And not just because it's Bump of Chicken. Because like, I didn't know it was them before. I was like, I know this band. Like I heard it. And I was like, this is really good. Like, oh, shit. And then Bump of Chicken like, appeared on the screens <laughs> in the credits. I'm like, oh, it's Bump of Chicken. Um, I think both the opening and ending are done by the people that did the first ending, or the ending of the first season, mm-hmm. which I... They're, they're okay like I think the ending of the first scene is really good like that style where they're like, kind of dancing in front yeah. of the curtain like it's got it feeds really into the style I honestly don't remember the opening and ending that much of the second season to be honest with you um, I had to watch them again um, but they didn't leave like a huge impression I preferred the first season but like yeah. I said I think if you like the first season it's still worth checking this out I don't think it's like oh god I ruined it like it's just eh, you know yeah, for a lot of people it's actually a lot better but really? again for me personally I prefer yeah. the first season yeah well uh, I never read the manga, so I, or mu- any much of the manga. So maybe it's for people who don't like the who like the manga watch the season more. I don't, I don't know what the causality of that is. Mm. No, I say understand that it's actually the reasoning. Okay, well, I still think it's worth seeing. If for nothing else, it's to see the animation of your scenes from the manga. Uh, do you so, mean the anime or the manga? Like I wasn't sure if you're asking oh, no, me so or if, asking if you've seen, Oh, have you seen the? Uh, I'm saying if you've read the manga, I see. I don't see I why you wouldn't it. want. To, oh. I mean, like if someone had, okay. I don't see why they wouldn't want to watch the anime. You know, any either season because you still get to see a lot of stuff from the manga. So I don't know what yeah. the problem is. And presented pretty well, I think. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't actually read any of the manga. Yeah, I read like a chapter a while ago. That's it. Hmm. All right. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so I <coughs> open the presents and oh, same yeah, thing with yeah, uh, the yeah, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. a little something something. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's all make a lot of the noise of the tissue paper. Thank you, Bryce. The first piece is just uh, this is for fun funsies. <laughs> you can play with that all you want. Just like the bubble wrap. Awesome. Thank you. So with with yours ketchup, <laughs> um, I they sent a that looks like a region two version of that game. It's a Server's Wrath for PS3. Which have you ever played this one or no? I haven't. Yeah, but I've it, been curious about. I think you'll like it. Um, go in knowing it's a, mostly like a big quick time event, but they commit so hard to the story and it's so bonkers that like it's kind of I kind of appreciate it for that. And I think that's why a lot of people do. It's by the same team, CyberConnect. I think they make the Naruto games look really nice. Um, the yeah. fighting games. I never really played them, but I know they look good. Yeah, they have that whole surf. Like, it actually does kind of look like the cartoon. Yeah, so this is, like, kind of the same thing with their own little style of it. Um, it's just, it's kind of a crazy thing. Just go in knowing that. I think you're, you're good to go. Like, there's some beat-em-up sections, I think, that are serviceable. But it's all about the, the action and the story and the cutscenes. Uh, so I checked out. It is this region 2. I don't know why Amazon sent it to me. It should work on a PS3 of any region. The games do. Uh, if it doesn't, let me know, and I'll go yell at Amazon and try to get a <laughs> different copy. Because I definitely didn't mean to order a... European that, copy. I think, suspect it'll be okay since mine is modded. Oh, for, it is okay. Yeah, yeah fine, probably. Because, um, like, uh, the, I noticed because the front, the, like, ES, their quote-unquote ESRB, it's not really the USB. Their rating is, like, what is this? Like, 15? <laughs> it just says 15 <laughs> instead of, like, you know, teenager or T for teen. Yeah, I think, like, you would their equivalent of yeah. our, like, for everyone. Yeah, this one says 15 on the front. If you look, turn around, it's uh, on the uh, on the front. Yeah, right, I you see. Can see 15 it. contains moderate violence and gore. Yeah, gore is a, that's the wrong word to say. It is, it's never gory. It's just kind of like, I would yeah. say it's like if, if you're okay with like a shonen game, anime, you're probably fine. Um, but I do see the uh, two next to the little yeah, like, so. outline of the globe. So I didn't mean to buy that version, but hopefully it'll work. If not, we'll make it work. I'll find out today yeah. and then 
ruin their Christmas by yeah. complaining to do incessantly. Yeah. And, yeah. like, I really like the bag, but I assume that's what you wanted back since uh, these bags tend to um, be. I mean, I no, got I mean, from my parents, so. <laughs> so that way okay, you I'll can use it. Because, like, I'd like the bag, but it's just going to, like, sit around and take up space. That's so right, right. Okay, I'll take it back then. <laughs> oh, well, here's yeah. uh Yeah, you got me the Back to the Future trilogy. Yeah. Um, I found it on your wish list. I was like, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Trying to open it up without like reaching for. Is this an additional bonus disc? I'm not sure if that's. I'm sure it's it's like probably all of the behind the scenes, all yeah. the things, and more of the things. And hey, we made a behind the scenes trilogy disc <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah, behind the scenes, making this Blu-ray collection. This yeah, is that's where I right. printed the page, <laughs> the printed the cover. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I'll have to, to look through this. Cool. Yeah. For help and support, please visit eu.playstation.com, or I can call Italy, Malta, Netherlands, New Zealand. <laughs> I can't believe they sent me that version. I got to check the order and see if, I, if they'd made a mistake or if I accidentally did it, asked for the, like, the European version. I would I be came. surprised that you could order that in the U.S. Yeah, I, it was prime eligible and everything, so it wasn't like, um, you know, if it were like coming from far away, it, it, like, it took two days to get here, so I don't know what the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I want to get you like an interesting kind of like more off the game, you know, like because I think it is a really special game in a lot of cool ways. Even though I wouldn't want all games to become like it mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's so simple mechanically, but just something about the way they commit to it. It's, it's the cool. fact that it is something different also yeah, makes yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, but anyway. Yeah, well, thank some. you very much for the game. Hope you like them. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, I guess we'll run a break and we'll be back in just a moment with uh, this week's topic. What's up, Internet? This is Mark from Ronin Dojo Community College DX, and you're listening to the one and only Otaku Generation. Ah, why won't you guys answer my emails? I want a nickname. And we are back from break with this week's topic, which is... Nyanko Days. Nyanko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's... Twelve two minute episodes. Yeah. So there's a girl. She's up. She has trouble making friends at school, but she has three adorable little cat girl cats who uh, they look like they're treated as if they're cats, even though they can communicate with her. Yeah, but they're I, definitely like they're look to look like little chibi girls with cat ears and tails. I found this whole thing kind of weird. So I mean, basically, <laughs> weird. You... I don't know about that. Like the anime we've seen over the years, yeah. this is probably not one of the weirdest things I've heard of. Like, you sh- so you this. sorry, just just humor me for a moment. So imagine your cat as like a a chibi five year old, and then realize that it, it's a little creepy because all your interactions that you have with these characters, like if you did this to a human baby, it would be weird. It would be very weird. So, um, so that well, like, cre- what are they doing? I mean, like they're the pat little, a baby's head? I don't think it's that weird. Well, no, they're like, you know, they're, they're gnawing on your fingers and little things. It's just, it's, I don't know. I just kind of came away from it. it like, that's just a little, little creepy in application. Not to mention that I, I, I'm being the negative one here. I have a feeling Rule 34 applies to this thing all over the place. So, with that said, you take all that stuff out. Um, if you can imagine your cats are, are alive, not just with tails and an ear, but, you know, walking, talking, and, and making a mess of things, you got yourself a little cute, short anime show. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I can't think of an example. I feel like I've seen this concept done before where they kind of be, like, you know, humanize like, anime girls as, in the form of a pet, and it being way creepier, and I can't think of the example, though. Star of Cotton Land. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> is that what you're searching up? The thing with Star of Cotton Land, though, is that with that one, like, it's been a very long time since yeah. I've seen this, so I don't really remember the story that well, but as I understand it, with that one, the cat is actually, in the real world, a cat, but she sees herself as, like, a human, since so she's represented right. in the anime as a cat girl, but in truth... She's just a cat. They're seeing it from, like, her eyes as this cat girl. And yeah. the anime shows her that way. But she is actually just a cat. But watching Nanko Days, I really do believe that these are cat girls. They're not cats that are being represented right, as yeah. cat girls. Because they interact with the people. And the yeah, owner is mean, actually I understanding. Understand that. I understand that. I, I think it was just more of the, the, the point of view or the comment was very related to... If you had a bunch of cats, look, if you like cats and you like anime, this is a good 24-minute show, you know, very short show. Um, And the interactions are perfectly fine. The animation is very good. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, movie-style beautiful, but, you know, it's perfectly, um, 
the server's it's not simple. horrible flash type right of short. yeah it's none of that like cheap you know they put effort and energy into this and the interactions with the characters is perfectly fine and you know the just a bunch of girls doing things doing stuff with cat girls um it's cat girls a, like children like child cat girls right or, it's not sort of like downright literally perverse as Poe to Mayo, or this isn't that all perverse yeah Nanko days but I'm just another sort yeah, of example of something with a similar kind right. of theme you this Poe to Mayo, if you remember yeah, my, that one my comment is like okay so it's not perverse I don't think there's anything really perverse about it you can you can imagine what's perverse here and Rue 34 kind of stuff applies because um, I think it's more of a wish fulfillment um, from that perverse perspective. I forgot what I'm thinking of. It's Inu Mimi, which is a manga. I don't know if I've ever made an anime for it, where, like, this guy comes back from, like, being abroad and, like, his, like, three dogs turn into girls. <laughs> like, girl-looking dogs. Or girls with cat... I guess, right. Dog girls. Which I think also that's a problem, because I think, like, when you think of, like, master and dog, like, it's a much more, like, right. of a domination type thing. Like, it's much more, like, on the... You know, yes, like the little, stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes. So it's way creepier when you like <laughs> make them into like humanoid girls. Right. Like, with cats, it's like a little more like I don't know. I feel like cats and their owners are more like partners <laughs> in a way of like being. They're more on the same level. Like cats don't think of themselves as, like the submissive to the master necessarily. Right. Maybe I'm wrong. I haven't owned, owned a cat, but that's the way I, I sort of see right. it. So well, dogs, like, there's a pecking order in the pack. Like that's in their nature. So right. Dogs are. Um... Dogs are loyal. They're more submissive to the the people that take care of them. Yeah. Um, and, and so there is there is more of um, there's a more of a symbiotic relationship there compared to cats. Cats are um, you're there to appease cats. Yeah. That's it. Which that, is fine. I'm not saying anything wrong with cats. I'm yeah, saying it's kind of the way uh, I, I grew I up with cats. It. So I'm just saying is so so with that. Um, so that's I, that was my example of like I remember something where this was like kind of a creepier concept of this and it was done much creepier. Yeah. Like just it rubbed me the wrong way much more than this ever did. But but for me it's just like, well, if if this if I had a cat that all of a sudden became like a a human child, um, and I had that same kind of level of interaction, it would be really disturbing. But um that was just my side thought uh on this now they're you know they're in and out in two minutes so there's not a lot of thought that has to go on while you're watching this um i didn't wasn't stressed out by watching all 24 of them in one shot so i mean there was 12 of them but it's 24 minutes 24 minutes i meant yeah so i mean there's like actual like somewhat of an arc with the main character though or like she's you know not great with other friends other Mm -hmm. people and like kind of the cats end up becoming like a way for her to bond with somebody who's initially very intimidated by who's very popular and that sort of relationship sort of progresses. The problem is that, like, it, it, only, like, it feels like only two days pass at this whole time. Yeah. Like, it's like, you know, they go off, her and the girl go off for coffee. They had, like, two episodes of that. It's like, so not a lot really happens. And there are those, episode. like, two or three filler episodes yeah. when they're just focusing on the three cats. Which I kind of like those a little more in some yeah. ways because yeah. it's, like, kind of funny, like, because they're not interacting with the humans. So it, it makes sense that they'd be able to interact with each other because they're all cats. They can understand each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you got to think about this is if you're not a pet person, this show is just totally not for you. Um, or I think it's also just for the Moe crowd. And, so and, and you the, don't have to necessarily right. be. Uh, and the other thing is most people that have pets think of their pet like a person, right? We uh, we talk to them. We sure. think, you Absolutely. know, we feel, oh, you're hungry. Like, you know, we interact with them like they're people. I mean, you know children. animals feel hunger, too. It's a I basic. Understand. <laughs> I understand, so. but but people often, after a, like a few minutes of cuteness in that first little early days, forget and then start thinking the cats are actually saying something to them when they're really just, you know, feed me, uh, take me out, feed me, take me out. Right? Again, that's still communication. If you think about yeah, the communication it. between people, like I got we it. have this like complex sentence structure, but most of the actual exchanges between people can probably be summed up as like maybe five. But it it becomes the same kind of thing as, you know, people that like plants and take care of plants think of them more than they just what they are. And so this is a perfect show for people that have that kind of relationship with pets. This is perfectly fine. The next anime is going to be plant girls. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that was the point. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that was it. That was the point is that this isn't really... If you don't have, you've not had any kind of general relationship with a pet that you take care of, then you wouldn't really. Uh, I probably wouldn't get the the relationship there. 
between, well, what if the fantasy fulfillment is, what if, what if you could literally talk to your cat and uh, hang out and play backgammon and play a video game, right? There you go. So, I think this anime is more also just going for the cute girls do nothing type of show. Right, it's yeah. just using the I mean, cat there's girl thing. Like talking cats thing. and other, yeah. mm-hmm. that aren't yeah. cat girls, just talking cats. I mean, there's plenty of anime with that. I mean, Sailor Moon. For, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, this show, I, I was going to the like, this is going to be terrible. And I actually was like, yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't bad. <laughs> it, um, it serves its purpose. Like, it's not trying to, like, yeah. do something, like, embark on some wildly ambitious, like, stories. It's like, ah, you know. 12 to minute episodes, fine. <laughs> yeah, and it, it has all the little tiny anime tropes, like, oh my gosh, she dropped something. Is this you based know. off of Four Coma? Um, it's based off of a manga, okay. but. Or is Four Coma? That would make sense is... to how short the episodes are. Oh, yeah, it's a Four Coma. Yeah, because sense, yeah. Wikipedia says four panel manga instead of calling it Four Coma. Okay, yeah, that sounds yeah. Cool. Um, I don't know, there's not a lot to say, I think. There's not really uh, any overarching um, point. It, unless I missed it, there's more substance to it than banana. Now, yes, banana. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> or the vampire cat thing. Yeah. Um, that that that's true. Um, so, I mean, that being said, um, what's the most catchy thing about it? The music <laughs> or the end credits sequence we're like talking every about? Every day, yang yang yang, yang every <laughs> night, go go go. <laughs> yeah, that's because. Again, the cartoon's only, or anime, is only two minutes long per episode, mm-hmm. but 30 seconds of that is the ending. And you can't even skip it because the ending sequence doesn't happen during the final fourth of the show. It happens about, like, okay. halfway, maybe, like, Like, it takes place from, like, yeah, one minute to 30 seconds, and then yeah. 30 seconds to two minutes is, like, more content. Yeah. So they're kind of like forced to watch it mm-hmm. or else they're going to skip the ending, which is in a preview of the next episode. That's actually more content. So, But good thing it's such a great ending, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the mistake that Bryce had made is he watched a lot of it, yeah. you know, before he went to bed. Yeah. So now it's stuck in your head forever. Yes, probably. probably. <laughs> they're on their deathbed and they're like, every day. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Put that on my tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> What do you want? You do some every day. Nya, 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 nya. <laughs> His grandchildren are all surrounding him, going, "Grandpa, like, what's something?" And then they're like, I'm "Just starting to sing this." I start quoting an old anime songs, yeah. any from Edo, Ido, like, "Be sure not left a word behind." That's a much yeah. sadder song. I might make her sense it on a deathbed, <laughs> but yeah. anyway. Um, see, that's sort of the joke with doing the Nanko Days song. It's because it's so inappropriate for their. <laughs> Your last words, Nenko is love. <laughs> I'm starting to think, I, I don't know what you think. I think you've already, you know what your appendage is going to be. Oh, yeah, I knew about like a long time <laughs> in advance. That's why I gave Bryce the cup because it's not going to work unless someone else reads it. Yeah. So, um, my thoughts on this are basic. I think it's, I think it's fine. <laughs> it's mostly harmless. Yeah. yeah. I, it's not, it, it could have been a lot creepier. It's not that creepy. It could have been a lot worse and painful but it wasn't you know i mean like i think there was i smiled a couple times watching it for sure there's some interactions between the cats especially that i really liked um basically my favorite episodes the two of the, the two episodes back to back where they were just kind of hanging out by themselves while the yeah. girl was at school like that <laughs> i wish it was more of that and less about the girl without friends because i don't think you can, like i said they're trying i don't think a lot can be told in this type of format so to have that kind of story i mean i don't know i just feel like it because there were episodes where I don't think they had the cats. Like there was an episode, at least one, where they were in the coffee shop. The yeah, two of them, and there was I remember mention that. Of the cat, or mention of the cats, but they're all showing the three girls. Yeah, the girls she becomes friends with also has another cat, so there's four cats to mm-hmm. keep track of. Um, I, I I look at this as a as a show that probably when it's not a bad recommendation to uh, watch all of them, but. You could probably not have to do that, right? It almost feels like uh, they like ask the computer, like, come up with a anime about cats, and this is like what popped in. Put it like this is what popped out. It's like okay, based sure. on the calculations of everyone who watches everything on YouTube. Uh, yeah, um, this if we were still doing Anime Club, and even back then, I was doing sort of a video server, so I could just digitally put content up and you know set up a playlist. I would put one of these episodes between each of the you know, regular regular slot shows, right? And I think that's a perfect way of watching this. A um, palate cleanser, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. just a, a thing between the episodes before you go from, um, you know, Kino's journey to Kenshin, to, right? to, to Kenshin, <laughs> to, to Cross of the Stars, the to, classics, right? Yeah, and then in the potluck. 
God knows what would have happened there. I'm going to eat strawberry eggs every time. Yes. I pitched it like 18 times. <laughs> did we ever watch it? Oh, yeah, we did. And everyone was like, that's so bad. I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm telling and, you. <laughs> and then I only watched it because you made a music video yeah, to it's it. It's not bad. I was, we could do this as a topic someday. Maybe 2018, we'll do it. Especially I, if they put it up on Crunchyroll. They finally get that all over there. I'll, we'll definitely do it. But, mm. but anyhow, so, um, yeah, okay. So I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else to be said about it. That we really kind of just randomly talked about it. Is there really anything worth that's like structure wise we missed? I'm kind of surprised that both of you are like recommending people check it out. Like, it's not something that I would say tell people not to see, but I don't see any reason to see it either. No, I'm with you on that. I yeah. don't think, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I, I'm not because it's so short. Like, it's hard to say, like, it's like, oh, this is right. Gonna... You know, I don't feel like I'm yeah. being irresponsible. I'm going to waste someone big, um, like all their time. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, given that I give something like 30 minutes to get to a point, it, well, it, it doesn't have to have a point in 30 minutes. It's over. So it's all over. The point it's is it's done. cute. That's like yeah. a thing. It's <laughs> yeah. cute. It's my way. Right. So, cute. I mean, I wouldn't – I'm not normally going to go look and they go, oh, I'm, I think I'm going to watch all of this. Like, that's not my thing. Um, but it's not uh, – We've, as we've mentioned, we've seen a lot worse, and um, there is a lot of lot worse. And then they have really terrible, you know, flash animation. It it's um, it just parallels like a thought I have where some people sometimes when they start something when they're building something, it it, it takes more energy to screw it up than it does just to do it near correct, and um, don't overcomplicate it, right? And so this is not a complicated thing at all. It's just for me, it was a little, little creepy. Yeah, not perverse, just creepy. So, um, okay, that's it. That, I'm done with my, my two cents on it or five cents on it. So, um, what about you guys? Well, I think I said my cents, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's no harm in watching it, but it's, okay. unless you're absolutely desperate for something to watch, I don't really see any point in bothering with it either. Yeah. So if you like cat girls and then and you've watched everything else with cat girls in it, then, hey, there's Namco Days. Okay, so I guess um, I guess it's time for us to wrap up. Uh, I am not apologetic that there's a short show happening, but uh, you got another one coming real soon, um, or at least for us. For you, it's like a whole year. So anyhow, with that said, thank you for listening to us, even if it was short. I hope you're enjoying your holidays. Um, you can check out our website, www.takugeneration.net, or just ognetworks.tv. It all goes to the same place. You can check out all the other stuff that's there. Um, I'm not uh, not blaming anybody. Uh, So you're going to find out next year in 2018 what our next show is going to be. Well, we should tell you now. We're going to do a year in review because it's not really. uh, It's kind of become a little bit of a tradition. So in 2018, we will talk to you on Wednesday. For feedback, you can always hit us up at ataka.generation at gmail.com. Ataka Generation, what word? Over Skype. I can talk. And uh, James, thank you for the cookies. We're gonna we're gonna open them up and and get our sugar highs in just a few minutes for you next week. We got a, yeah. got a fortune right. cookie. <laughs> Ready for this? Yeah. Pessimism never won any battle. Now, 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 now. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, that was really dirty what you just said, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that it's gonna inspired piss... <laughs> an army to conquer a nation, <laughs> and, 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 and that's gonna piss off some cats. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Have a good holiday. See you next year.